Good morning and welcome back to the garden. Lovely warm day, overcast. I do believe we've got some storms coming, but we'll see. Now, I just thought we'd start by showing you, I keep talking that I use spent compost. And so I'm making it at this time of year. So I'll show you how we do it. These are the pots that have had the tomatoes or the peppers in. This particular one had a pepper in it. That's been cut off, chopped up and put into the compost bin. And this is what I do to obtain the spent compost. Just, as you can see, the top of it's pretty good. So let's tip it out and have a look. There it is, full of root. Just check it for the bugs. There was one wood lice on it, that was all there was. And then what to do, this is an old screen or I made donkeys years ago and it seems to do the job quite well. Break the compost, break the break the root ball up a little bit and then what I do then is a good pair of gloves on obviously and then just rub it through that screen. This leaves the roots behind the main roots anyway the smaller roots will go through but by the time you use the compost they'll be gone anyway. This is compost that we made ourselves last year using the spent compost so there's not a lot of waste. Just give it a bang and it clears the grid. And then just rub it through. Keep pulling this part until you're left with just the root ball right at the stem. It's actually better if you bang it on there. There's the root stem with the tight root on it. I don't put that through. I just put this through. Just keep rubbing it. Obviously keep your eye out for vine weevil etc. Worms are all right, they'll go through with it. And then, and then just take the root off best you can. You won't get all off. Put that on one side. And this, that is the spent compost with a little bit of root in it, but that'll disappear over the winter anyway. If you see a clump, take it out, obviously. That's your spent compost. What I do is I store it in uh, an old builder's bag. Those of you that know what I mean, the big uh, sandbags, aren't they? And I put it in there, store it through the winter. Then in the spring, we can start and use this spent compost as a base for building next year's compost. Get quite a bit of spent compost out of them and a little bit of screening and it's ready to go again. With the compost we're getting these days it's better if you can make your own a little bit anyway. I've just uh, done another 10 litre pot so that's near as good as 20 litres of spent compost that will come in very useful in the spring. Now the root balls you got here, what I do, I just put them on the compost bin and try and rot them down a bit for next year. Sometimes they rot down, sometimes they don't. I think it depends how wet they are. Uh, now we'll... That's the chicken singing to you. We've got two. <laughs> we, uh, we'll just dip down the garden and we're going to lift some celery for freezing for the winter. Now we're, we've come down to where the cellar is going. You can see it's, it's quite big. And I think we'll take the tree from this end so the bit of air can get through. 
I'll only be able to break them, break the soil and then cut them off. There's no chance of getting right under them. There we go. You see the quite big plants. And then there's a little bit of dried leaf on it where the guts are dry, but there's some length on it. So that's one, let's get to it. There's, there's another one. I thought I was going to have to get the chainsaw to cut that one off. It's a good job I got the metal fork with the metal handle so I'd never get easy to eat them. Yes. Let's knock some of the soil off there. Now, I forget the name of this celery, but Di will put it on for me. It's the one that has a pink base and a green top. Those three will be stripped back, chopped up and used in the freezer for winter. We've got a lot more here. We've got three because the freezer is getting a little bit full this year and we've still got a lot of crops to get in it. Now, this time of year with the early morning mists etc um, we do get quite a bit of sea fret that's a very very fine rain especially in the mornings you will get a lot of mildew forming on the pumpkins and the courgettes and they will creep into the cucumbers and the squashes as well so what I've done here I've removed the badly mildew leaves and put them in a heap I won't put them on the compost heap if I can't burn them I'll take them to the waste site now the courgettes are still producing they're actually producing better now than what they did in the main summer with this nice warm weather so we seem to be getting a lot I think we've got about a dozen there so it's time to visit Gemma what we've decided to do we're going to pick the Roma the plum tomatoes we're going to go right along the whole crop and pick the best out as you can see they're, they're going down now it could be the the dry conditions as you can see everywhere around them the soil is cracking because it's so dry so we decided to pick the fruit and then take the plants out now we'll just show you what we've harvested now these are the Roma tomatoes this will be the last pick of the season on these we've got two boxes of reds and two boxes of what we call blushing they'll ripen up in the next few days maybe a week and then three of the celery what we're going to freeze down ready for the winter hello and another day in the garden beautiful sunny morning now this morning the onion sets have come for the overwintered onions They've arrived this morning, as you can see, there we go, and there's three lots, that one is Senshu, this one that will be electric, yes that's electric, and this one is upside down, Autumn Champion. There looks a lot there, but the time we've sorted through them, there, there won't be that many. We just take the nice big fat ones for planting. But we'll plant those at a later date. 
I shall leave the box in the shed but leave it open for the time being. The shed is a little bit cooler than what it is out here so they don't be in the sun. They'll be fine for a day or so. Now we're going down to the garden to plant some cabbages. Now we started to plant them and it got too hot so we said we're not going to plant them. Then it was too wet to plant them but today I think it's just right and there's only six plants anyway. Now we've got down to where we're going to put the cabbages or brassicas we should say brassicas. I've already put in six winter cauliflowers at the far end and these were the first of the spring cabbages and now we're going to put in six winter cabbages which are tundra which is very very hardy so somehow we'll get a good crop out of this little patch we're just going to put these six in if you go say there and there and then two four six i have had them waiting in these pots a little while so they have grown a little bit but we'll put them in a bit deeper we'll just take those two seed leaves off look and that one And all this wet weather, the trouble is the, the slugs come up. Put them in quite deep, they should be fine. Just chomp it round. And then cabbages, brassicas, all in firm. And then we'll put some coffee around them in a moment. And just get them set. I'm taking the leaves because they've been outside and we do get we do get butterflies. When I was preparing this this morning I took the mesh off to do a bit of raking and there was a butterfly in straight away. I'll just take those two seed leaves. Should be alright at that point. Um, better take that one off, looks it's too low. And that one. Now I've just had to chase a cabbage white butterfly out of the mess. At the moment it's bad enough with a white fly in there, but I don't want caterpillars as well. Let's get them in and we'll get this mesh back on. Yeah. We'll do two more and then I'll finish and show you the good deep holes. There we are, there we are. Just check the leaves, they're fine. Seed leaves can come off and that one and that one look a bit low. And in they go. And that nice and tight. I smoothed the area because I want to put coffee on there so I'll just uh, I'll just show you taking these leaves off. And I know that leaf's going to be a bit low and that one and I'll put that in nice and deep that'll be fine so I'll get these in and then show you with the coffee right these are the coffee grounds we use we collected from shops that sell coffee they're soon uh, they're soon pleased to let you have some and then I put it through a screen because it's in uh, round balls when it comes and then what to do, I take the plant up, sprinkle it round and just flatten it a bit. It's easy to flatten the soil first actually and just hold the plant, put it round. 
Now you can see this one. If you just flatten the soil a little bit, it does help. I can see white fly flying about. Little things. Now with all this rain we've had and the rain we've got coming, it's going to be quite wet next week I do believe. So I'm going to put some beer traps down as well for the slugs. Because you can imagine when the soil's nice and wet and warm and you've laid out the dinner for them, they'll soon be up for it. Now I've already put two in, so we'll put the third one just here, I think. I'll show you. They're only, they're actually the cups that we have for the chickens that hook on the wire for them to have a bit of extra food in, but they've never used them now for a couple of years, so I thought we'll use them for this. We'll put here. Put them down and just level with the soil to them, that's the way I do it. Like that. Now it usually fizzes a bit when we open it, especially when it's warm. There it goes, look, fizzing everywhere. And just fill it up. It'll overflow a little with the foam, but That'll actually create a smell for them. Let's try and get a little bit more in. These two hooks that are on it, I just put a piece of wood over it like that, just to take the rain away from it. Now, hopefully, between the beer and the coffee, and hopefully some dry weather to dry the crust out on the soil, we shouldn't have much slug damage. The word being shouldn't, we'll see. Now I've just covered the cabbage plants up with the mesh. Hopefully that will keep the butterflies out a little bit. There's loads of them today. I think it's because they've been cold and now it's got warm so they've all come out of it. I'll just show you the strawberry bed. As you can remember we cut all the tops off and you can see where all the new growth that you see, all the growth you see on this is the new growth. What I should do over the next few days is bring some of our own garden compost. I might just screen it first, just take any big lumps out. And I should put that all between these um, strawberries and then leave those for winter. Now, as you can see, I've cut most of the leaves off the tomatoes now. It's helping, to, helping them to ripen a little bit quicker and the reds are coming better now. And with this nice warm weather we're getting, they will ripen and then we can get them picked. But the, as you can see, this, there's a few still on there and we've had quite a few off them this year. So. We can put the tomatoes down as a good crop. Now I'll just go down and show where I'm going to put the onions and another little bit of ground that I've cleared, forked over and that would be the one we put the manure on and some straw on top and leave those as a winter cover. Now this is the piece of ground we emptied and as you can see I've forked it over and what I should do is put some manure on top and then a covering of barley straw as a winter cover for now and then perhaps in the spring we'll dig it in. There's another piece over there that's clear. I've got that to do yet. I want to fork it over first so, and then put the manure and straw on. This little plot here 
will be for those onions, overwintering onion sets and this piece here will be for the garlic. I should just put them in because they're not want a lot of feed over winter but come spring then we'll give them some high nitrogen feed and it will bring them all along. Now that's a bit for now because we're both getting a bit warm in this sunshine although it is glorious but not for this time of year. Now we'll see you again shortly and we'll see if we can get the onions in but first I will need to string those onions. That will be the next job for us and then we'll put the onions in. Take care everyone, see you soon, bye.